Alrighty, it is still May 27, 2019. More farms gone, more flooding, and more, well, it does look like it's going to be catastrophic flooding. Those uh, areas around the Arkansas River below the Keystone Dam. But let me start first with one Pacific Redwoods video that he posted yesterday, and the title well, says it all. No effort being made to cut off warm tropical flow to storms over Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, South Dakota. Okay, uh, if you don't know One Pacific Redwood, uh, check out his channel. And he talks about the weather terrorists who are controlling the weather, bringing drought, well, brought drought to California, bringing floods. Uh, to central United States as I speak. But he he shows you signatures of the frequencies like I do. Now uh, we're looking at a uh, weather system. Let's go and take a look at the uh, water vapor loop. This is moving down uh, the state of California. We can see this gigantic weather system right here. And we can see that uh, a lot of moisture off of the jet stream is being blockaded right here. We have high pressure installed between this vortex and this uh, approaching uh, water vapor. But notice what's happening over here. This is where the uh, hotel was knocked down, completely destroyed by a tornado, and I believe it was Oklahoma. Notice what's happening here. We have a tropical flow pattern. This is a warm, moist flow pattern, and no effort is being made to separate this flow pattern, in other words, they could just cut a, a, a cut a path all the way through here to separate this warm tropical air uh, from merging and creating these uh, tornadoes right here. So we've got colder air. This is, like I say, it's 50 degrees. It's been very cold all day. So we've got a cold weather system. This came out of the, uh, right down, down the coast here. And so uh, we see that a blockade has been built in here that is blocking everything moving in from the Pacific, but over here, uh, nothing is being done about this uh, warm tropical flow moving right into this colder weather system, and of course that's going to cause a lot of thunderstorms and wild weather. So these terrorists controlling our weather are uh, doing a fine job of regulating rain amounts here in California, even though we are getting rain. They're throwing us a few peanuts here and there. We, we, like I say, we had about a quarter inch of rain today. We also had 3.30 seconds last Wednesday. So that brings the season total up. Uh, I haven't. Okay, so I will link below to this video. I'll link below to everything. But um, you see this right angle right here. One of the signatures of the frequencies. Uh, the One Pacific Redwood talks a lot about satellites. I've shown you uh, one very important patent. Uh, weather modification by artificial satellite. They can shoot these frequencies from Gwen Towers, extremely low frequencies from Gwen Towers, from extremely low frequency transmitter sites, the high frequencies coming from Doppler radar, and our satellites. So, you know, I have shown very often the signatures on radar. Yes, Yes, they can. They can stop these flooding events. They're not doing it because we are at war. We are at war. And as I go through some of the videos, you will see people are saying we got no warning. Well, guess what? Sometimes when, you know, there is a war in your area, you may get a warning okay, they're going to drop bombs, but mm, pretty much all the time, you don't get that warning. The bomb just drops. Guess what? We're at war. Bombs aren't dropping. Well, actually, let's say rain bombs are dropping. They're just using weather as a weapon. Unconventional warfare. Look it up. Do some research. So, um, 
Yeah. Things are really bad, guys. The flooding is intense. Earlier today I was on the bridge. Right now we're under it and from the bridge you can see just how high the river water is. You can also see how fast it's moving and all of those folks who have actually the Arkansas River walked past these barricades to see that. What? Did she say they walked past the barricades? Arrest them. Arrest them. Oh my god. How do you walk past the barricades? Those barricades are put up so that you don't walk past them. My God, people, Whew, such a nuisance. As well, the river levels are what have caused many hardships for some people we spoke with today. My family's been there for over 100 years. But Lindsay's family isn't in Moffitt tonight. So we really don't know what we're going to do, uh, to be quite honest. David Lindsay's home, along with his mother's and daughter's, now flooded. Right now I think what I've seen uh, for my binoculars was my daughter has at least three feet in her home. While many made their way to the Garrison Avenue Bridge to look at the river, Lindsay was looking at his home, a place he doesn't anticipate going back to anytime soon. He and his family are now staying in a motel. Rolling through a storm and having to endure a storm is not as bad as when you come to the other end of it and whether or not you're going to find mercy and compassion and kindness. His positivity, he says, is what's helping him push through this storm. Because uh, I, I got a, a big journey ahead. A, a big journey ahead for, ah, uh, man, I, I, I would say tens of thousands of people, a big journey ahead for the months of flooding that has hit the central United States. All right, um, this map, I was thinking today, you know, I was recalling all of the events that were taking place after Harvey, the flooding of the Houston area, we had those celebrities doing their celebathon, taking donations by phone, and they took in, I think, about 50 million. We had the president's event to take in donations for Harvey. Red Cross was all over the place. Google, donate Harvey. And those are the ones that I can recall. So, uh, I. I did post videos on this and I calculated, you know, based on all of the information that I could find. And man, did they take in a tremendous amount of money, hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars donated for Harvey victims. Okay. So people have questions. All right. Well, if you say that they're reshaping the United States, uh, and this is America 2050 map in the gray area. That's the no human zone. Yeah, no, they want humans out of the gray area. And humans will be in the colored regions. These are the mega regions. And they are, and they have been, uh, implementing the reshaping. So why did they flood out Houston if it's part of the Texas Triangle because they're building new infrastructure. The building of the new infrastructure, the smart city, the smart city in these mega regions, Dallas, Houston, Austin, um, what's the other one? Is it, I want to say San Antonio, but I'm not sure. Um, all will be smart cities. That takes an awful lot of money to create. They hold these events. They take in hundreds of millions of dollars and it doesn't go to the victims. It's going to the building of the smart cities in the mega regions. Okay, so do you see right up this way 
Now you've got Tulsa, well Tulsa's up here, and Oklahoma City. That's part of the Texas Triangle. And well, I guess they'll have high speed rail, high speed trains as transportation. Um, but the surrounding area, they won't have people. Uh, eventually, all the people will be gone. Do you see? Has Google put up a donation for all of, and we're talking massive flooding of so many states. Hundreds of homes have been flooded out in the last 24 hours. I'll show you that. Why, why do we see nothing? Why do we see very little information about this flooding? What's going on here? We don't see, I haven't seen anything uh, about Red Cross. I've hardly come across any um, articles, mainstream media articles, on shelters. I mean, they, when you had the Harvey flood, um, that's what you were coming across all the time. So, no information about shelters and uh, no donation. You don't see a donation on Google, that page. Uh, I went to buy some cat food at Walmart. Walmart's not asking for any donations for the massive flooding. No celebathon, nothing going on. The only areas that they will be doing any kind of smart city um, renovation is in Oklahoma City, Tulsa, and these other small areas that are connected to the Great Lakes region. All this gray area, they want people gone. They want you gone. No joke. This is no joke. This is very serious. And, you know, it's, while very hard to um, comprehend, it's, just because it's hard to comprehend doesn't mean it's not happening. Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, yep, Northwest Texas, all of this area of Texas. Then you have, yep, uh, Arkansas, Missouri, Iowa, um, pretty much all of Minnesota, North Dakota, South Dakota. They want you out of there. And they have great patience. They've been implementing this plan for, well, certainly since, you know, Agenda 21, which was back in, what, 1992? Um, now they're full speed ahead. That's why they're bringing you all those tornadoes, all of the flooding. And whoever is left, you'll be flooded out again and again until you hand over your property to FEMA for pennies on a dollar. Until you hand over all of those uh, beautiful acres of farmland that you have, you're not going to, that's it. You know, they will destroy you. So, uh, and it's happening all over. Maine gone. Most of, well, pretty much all of them are gone. New Hampshire, um, New York State, gone. Upstate. You might think, oh my god, somebody just put this up on the internet and none of it is real. She's just crazy and she fell for it. Well, go to America 2050. Go to the site. And then do a little bit of research and find out how many organizations refer to America 2050. So, um, another farm gone in Missouri. Another farm gone in Missouri. 
and I really do hope that everybody is prepared to leave. You may not get any warning of massive flooding coming your way. Here. Tonight from New York, I'm David Begno. The central U.S. is stuck in a cycle of dangerous storms that may not stop anytime soon. Tornado You're stuck because they are being generated by man. Tornado struck again today in Iowa, Illinois, and Indiana, and more may fire up tonight. In the past week, at least 15 people have been killed by tornadoes and flooding. Tonight, rivers are rising to record levels, threatening homes and businesses in Arkansas, Oklahoma, Kansas, and Missouri. We begin tonight with Omar Villafranca. He's in Oklahoma. More severe weather slammed the Midwest this afternoon. Heavy rain and hail hammered Illinois. I've never seen one. This tornado touched down in Iowa. Over the past few weeks, spring storms have soaked the nation's midsection. Drone video shows the scope of the historic flooding along the Arkansas River near Fort Smith. And the worst is yet to come. The river is expected to crest on Wednesday, a historic 20 feet above flood stage. Residents aren't just worried about keeping the water out. Barling police officer James Breeden says they're keeping an eye on the levee. There is a concern about the integrity of the levels. They've never been tested to this limit before. Donna and Jerry Morgan spent Memorial Day delivering sandbags to people bracing for the rising water. It's dire, dire. I mean, these people are suffering. They're losing everything. They're losing their homes. Over the weekend, an EF3 tornado. Okay, it's not that I don't care about the tornado. I've posted on it. I'm showing you new, new destruction with every video. Uh, streets are flooded all over the country now. Streets, the water just um, starts rising very quickly and then just sits there, sits there. What's happening to the drainage? What's happening to the drains? Do a search on YouTube, just put in flooding and you will see how many streets people are just like, okay, um, here we go. They kayak down their streets. They're, what's happening to the drains? Now, I have said before, I believe that they are closing them down. But you hear these news reports, and perhaps, you know, I was thinking about this today, perhaps these news reports are uh, the, well, plausible deniability they keep referring to the drains being clogged. So the cities are not cleaning the streets? Is that what is happening? Well, I, I do think that some drains are being clogged, but um, something else is happening because this is entirely new that we have streets that are just inundated with flooding and it just doesn't go away. So this is in uh, the Chicago area. Uh, threat for more flooding increases all across Iowa, all across Iowa. And all of the articles and the videos are from today. Angry residents west of Sand Springs say they didn't have enough warning to evacuate. What's going on? Residents of the Town and Country Edition west of Sand Springs on Monday accused government officials of failing to give them proper warning of potential flooding. Okay, get it. You can no longer rely on your government officials to protect you. You can no longer rely on your government officials to do their job. You can no longer rely on federal agencies like the Army Corps of Engineers to protect you. We've seen this over and over and over again throughout the years. And we're hearing it now more frequently than ever before. Hundreds of homes in the neighborhood of uh, town and country 
are under water, with more expected to be touched as the release from Keystone Dam increased from 20, uh, 250,000 to 275,000 cubic feet per second Monday. Janet Sisko said she has several feet of water on her two acre property. She said they didn't evacuate, they didn't tell us soon enough, they have been lying to us all along about how much water is coming out. Because they're doing it purposely. Do not think that they're just incompetent or making mistakes or, gee, I didn't know. They're doing it purposely because they do not want you. You're no longer welcome in this area. So, um, they've been lying to us all along about how much water is coming out. She stepped out her front door, saw the flooding coming up the street, saw homes being flooded all around them. The only reason why we know what is going on is because of our Facebook page. We feel like we've been left out. Uh, it's all about Meadow Valley because they're in Sand Springs city limits. We're outside the city limits, so uh, we're kind of left hanging. Sanders family and other town and country residents said the United States Army Corps of Engineers continues to do a poor job of managing water levels. The Army Corps of Engineers is implementing Agenda 2030. Agenda 2030, the United Nations plan to reshape the entire world. Well, America 2050, the reshaping of the United States, is to create those mega regions and the smart cities because all of that is sustainable. That's Agenda 2030. The Army Corps of Engineers and all of our federal agencies are implementing Agenda 2030. Do not ever think you can rely on the Army Corps of Engineers because there, it's not that they're doing a poor job, they're doing a great job in flooding you out. It's purposeful, intentional. Yes, we are at war, and well, if they dropped bombs, we would all unite and fight. Unconventional war, they got us. They got us to fight one another. So nothing is stopping this. Um, Army Corps of Engineers doing a poor job of managing water levels in the Arkansas River and in area lakes in anticipation of spring rains. The Corps also puts too much emphasis on keeping water levels high for boating and business purposes. Well, guess what? There ain't nobody doing it now. And yes, Army Corps of Engineers, they make their excuses. Um, purpose of a dam? Well, it's to mitigate flooding downstream. Catastrophic flooding is coming to all of you within the next day or two. Hard to, hard to take in what is happening and very hard to take in that we're not having um, a great awakening of Americans to what is happening here because everything that is happening is so unprecedented and then you have mainstream media talking about climate change well guess what please turn on that critical thinking switch in your brain again turn on that logic again turn on common sense again if it was climate change it would not come about radically overnight this kind of damage it would be incremental the 20 mile long levee system protecting Sand Springs and West Tulsa continues to hold up despite having unprecedented levels of water uh, for an extended period of time. 
do not think that those levees are going to continue to hold up. I hope they do. But here, you, you get the Army Corps of Engineers, you get that you know, sheriff or the state patrol guy talking about how you know the levees, it's a lot of pressure on them. Um, here, <laughs> we do have a lot of resources there to help. We even have an Apache helicopter ready to drop a five-ton sandbag if we need it, if there is some kind of breach in the levees. So I sure hope that all of you along the Arkansas River on either side are prepared to leave very quickly. And don't be surprised if the massive catastrophic flooding suddenly comes at 3 o'clock in the morning. All right. Yep, security on the rise to prevent looting in evacuated areas. National Guard uh, called out to patrol the town and count, count country area. Um, Sokoloma, <laughs> rain totals in Oklahoma in the last 30 days up 248%. Wow. Okay, have to mention this. I have a playlist, weather modification. I have another playlist, geoengineering. I have another playlist climate change and the fraud of it. And no, I am not speaking my opinion. I am sharing facts and evidence, but when you uh, face a very demoralized people, they don't care about facts and evidence anymore. Their opinion is just fine. So, residents evacuate Fort Smith. Fort Smith, um, Sand Springs, Van Buren, you're looking at massive flooding coming your way. And it's interesting when you get the comments from people who say, wow, it's only happening in poor neighborhoods. Excuse me? I went out to Baton Rouge 2016 right after it flooded <laughs> and I posted videos interviewing people posted videos driving through a neighborhood just like this with all of their belongings on the curb and that neighborhood the smell of sewage was really very hard to very hard to take yesterday we, we prepared for the 41 foot um, forecast it was kind of iffy on that but we thought we could stay and manage that um, since they moved it to 42 and a half it's almost certainly going to get into our house and we we keep hearing rumors of even higher numbers so we're trying to scramble around get out what we can while we can still get things moved up to the second floor where possible and then just make sure we get all the vehicles and everything out before we get flooded in because our uh, the water's coming up through the drainage system, flooding our cul-de-sac, and we might be kind of trapping us in here. Living here, as long as we have to look out, the river's, you know, 60, 70 yards from the back door and up uh, quite an elevation distance, and you look and you just think there's no way it would ever get up here. And now we're dealing with the reality where it's actually up on our, close to our sidewalks. Uh, it's creeping up the back of our house into the some of the uh, air conditioning units and things. Uh, then, in that, you know, we never really thought but it's coming up through the cul-de-sac and flooding that. So uh, we could soon be on an island, and then it could be in the house very quickly. So that's what we're we're looking at, and we're just trying to salvage what we can. Um, you know, we don't have flood insurance because you know it's out of the 500 year floodplain. We never even thought there was a chance that it could flood. But uh, now, from what we see, it's almost certain to flood. We got uh, people from... Uh... Don't have flood insurance. And how often have we heard that? I've heard it quite often. Baton Rouge, when I was talking to people who were flooded out, they moved because they were flooded out in New Orleans. Katrina. They moved to Baton Rouge to a non-flood plane and there they were with no flood insurance flooded again 
you cannot think you won't be flooded out because you're in a non-flood plain. Guess what? When man controls the weather, man can do an awful lot. Anywhere man wants to. This is Montana. More flooding taking place in Montana. The Blackfeet tribe, the, the reservation, this is um, flooded out. And Augusta, well, they put out those sandbags, but guess what? Didn't work. And another farm gone in Montana. And flash flood warnings go on until later on tonight. Nebraska. Heavy rain overnight into the early morning on Monday leaves a pond of water surrounding apartments near South 38th Street in Council Bluffs. People forced to pump water from their homes. This family trying to pack everything up after waking up to this. I heard her kind of like scream or something and I was like, what's wrong? Water just inches away from entering their home at River Park Apartments. But Eduardo Lopez says it's nothing new. It was like August of last year and like everything flooded. Just kind of like it started like this, I guess. Lopez and his family moved back in thinking the coast was clear. I thought it wasn't going to happen again. I thought it was just maybe the rain or whatever. The city was going to get some better pumps. Now they're moving out for good, but he wants to know what the city plans to do to keep this from happening to others. Will the city get new pumps? In Council Bluffs, Naya Gonzalez, KETV News Watch. No, the city is not going to do anything. And when we see this kind of flooding, this water just sitting uh, covering streets, um, is it really just from rain? Something else is going on here. So I will link below to it all. I hope everybody stays safe. I hope that you circulate this information. Uh, it is now every single day we are seeing more and more getting flooding, uh, being flooded out. Hundreds of homes in one area in 24 hours. Massive flooding going on and well you hardly hear a peep about it. 